In the previous verses, we see that Srila Vyasadeva has been praising his spiritual master, Narad Muni. So it might be thought proper, according to ordinary etiquette, that Narad would also praise Vyasadeva. If someone comes to him and says, actually, you are very nice, you are very wonderful, then it might be thought the proper thing to do to say, well, you're also a very wonderful person. If someone comes to, to you, someone comes to someone else and starts praising him and says, you're very good, you're wonderful, it might be thought the proper thing to say that actually you are wonderful, you have so many good qualities, to reply to him in the same way. Mm-hmm. But here the Guru is Narad and Vyasa is his disciple. So it is proper for Vyasa to praise Narad. That should be done at least as a matter of formality, to praise the Guru. But of course a proper disciple doesn't praise only out of a sense of formality, but praises with feeling from the heart. And certainly in the case of Narad, he is not simply uttering some empty praises because Narad is the greatest preacher of Krishna consciousness. So Narad accepted the praises of his disciple, but he immediately pointed out his fault. To be the guru of Vyasadeva, you can't be just any ordinary new bhakta. Certainly one has to be on the very highest level of transcendental understanding. Because Vyasadeva himself is the original guru of everybody. Of course, Krishna Bande Jagat Guru, Krishna is the original guru, but on his behalf, Vyasadeva is giving knowledge to all of human society. So Narada is immediately pointing out the fault of Vyasadeva, that you have not actually broadcast the sublime and spotless glories of the personality of Godhead. Now, we may say that actually Krishna Leela is also mentioned in other parts of the Vedic literature. You will find in different places in the Puranas, there are descriptions of Krishna's Leela and descriptions of the Leelas of other avatars of the Lord also. But here, now it is explained this, Bhavatanudita Prayam Yasho Bhagavata Malam, that you've, you've mentioned, he admits, yes, you've mentioned the glories of the Lord, but Anudita Prayam, but almost not praised, it's not actually clearly praising the glories of the Lord. In other words, just like you'll find in some of the Puranas, there's descriptions of Krishna's Leela, and then you'll find a whole big le- description of Brahma and Ganesh and like this. The Vishnu Purana is the, uh, after the Bhagavad Purana, the very important Purana for understanding Lord Vishnu. But even after that, uh, even there, the extent is not extensively described the glories of Krishna's Leela. So Narad is chastising Vyasadeva. This is your fault, correct it. Guru means he knows how to direct the disciple, how to revive his dormant Krishna consciousness. Even the most neophyte devotee, or what to speak of devotees, even a great demon, is capable of being a Paramahamsa. So the Guru has transcendental intelligence how to guide the disciple to come to that point. Of course, it depends on the disciple being willing to follow the Guru. Simply to praise the Guru, you are very good, you are very wonderful, but not follow his instructions, is meaningless. Therefore we find that generally the best disciples, they come in for the most chastisement. Because one who is very weak and not very surrendered, then if he's chastised by the Guru, then he may just go away altogether. His relationship with the Guru is more or less based on sentiment, not proper philosophical understanding. Therefore... The Guru deals with him on the platform of that sentiment only. He tries to teach philosophy, but if someone is not ready to take that up, then somehow or other he may be engaged in service. He tries to engage him somehow or other. But factually, one who has a, uh, whose approach is mostly sentiment, he doesn't, can never really understand what it means to be a disciple or what is the position of the Guru. Therefore, we, we find people saying that, Yes, I knew he was my guru when he smiled at me. This is not the way to understand. What is the way to understand? What he looks like, how long his shika is, how many rasgulas he can eat at one sitting. What is the way to understand the guru? Who, who can say? By hearing, by hearing. In spiritual life, seeing means by hearing. So one who can hear nicely from the guru, uh, he can quickly make advancement. Because Vyas is immediately ready to hear Narad, he doesn't waste any time. He immediately comes to the point. He asked for so many days, he'd been thinking, what's the problem? What's wrong? What's, what's, what am I doing wrong? 
I wrote all the Vedas, that's my job. I'm Vyas, I'm supposed to do them. I, d- I did it selflessly for the good of human society. Then why am I feeling such dissatisfaction in my heart? The problem which he couldn't find himself, Narada immediately pointed out. This is the reason that you are depressed. Now do something about it. Do what? Write the Srimad Bhagavatam. Narada saw the potential in his disciple. We saw, see also Srila Prabhupada, he went among the hippies. He didn't have Vyasa as his disciple, he had hippies as disciples. But he made them into representatives of Vyasa Dev because he saw underneath the long hair and the smelly socks, here is a devotee of Krishna. So Narad saw, here is the person who will describe the Srimad Bhagavatam, the topmost literature, which is an incomparable literature, which uh, dis- philosophically establishes Sri Krishna as the Supreme Absolute Truth. All posing philosophies have been answered in the Srimad Bhagavatam. The glories of the Supreme Lord's name, fame, qualities, pastimes and devotees have all been delineated in detail. Name, form, qualities, pastimes, devotees. Uh, The glories of devotional service have been fully delineated giving numerous historical examples how great devotees uh, by performing devotional service they achieved all perfection. Uh, Bhagavatam is also recognized as a great book of poetry because the uh, Sanskrit composition is extraordinarily beautiful. Most important of, uh, most important of all, this uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is a book of rasa or transcendental relationship. Spiritual knowledge is divided into three categories. Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojan. Which means, Sambandha means uh, understanding our relationship with God. Abhideya means uh, acting in that relationship by performing devotional service. And Prayojan means attaining the uh, ultimate goal of life, love of God. Entering into our relationship with God. So all of these subjects are important, but ultimately the goal to be attained is our loving relationship with Krishna. So how devotees have attained that and what kind of relationship they they have attained in in connection with Krishna, that is described in Srimadhava. In the very beginning of the Bhagavatam, Vyasadeva, after telling what is the subject matter of Bhagavatam, encourages to drink that nectar of the bhakti rasa. Less intelligent people, they think that the Bhagavatam is simply some stories. Stories it is, that's true. But it's not something like the novels you buy, some stupid story. In the modern age, there are so many useless detective stories, cowboy stories, sex stories, cartoons. Cartoon, this... They show some picture in, in the newspaper, comic, comic. Superman, Batman. You mean Superman hasn't arrived in Russia? He hasn't come to the modern age if we don't have Superman, Coca-Cola, McDonald's hamburgers, Levi McDonald's hamburgers, Levi G. Quick, call Bill Clinton immediately. Get on the hotline. We don't have Superman in Kazan. Call Walt Disney. Bring him back to life. Inject his, he, he wanted to get injected to come back to life. Give him an injection, quick. Communism has gone, but if you don't have Superman, you're still half dead. No, this is all rubbish, rubbish. We have Superman. Krishna is Superman. Much more super than your useless Superman, who's only an imagination anyway. So, this uh, Vyasadeva is describing. This may appear just to be some stories, but in every story there is uh, so much exchange of loving affairs between the Lord and His devotees. And as one develops his feelings for an understanding for Krishna, then by reading the stories of Bhagavatam, he can appreciate this more and more. As, uh, when reading these stories in Bhagavatam, we can try to enter into the spirit. We are advised, Mahajano yenakata sapantha. We should follow in the footsteps of the great devotees. So the stories of the great devotees are given here so that we can pick up the spirit of following in their footsteps. For instance, I was just reading uh, about Bali Maharaj. So, no doubt we've all heard this story many times. But you can read again and again and again, and you'll find 
if we apply our intelligence, we can find more and more depth in these narrations. So I was just reading how uh, Shukracharya was saying to Bali Maharaj, Murha, he called him Murha, you fool, if you give away all your possessions to Lord Vishnu, then where will you live? Because Shukracharya, he was the guru for Bali Maharaj. But he was a typical materialistic religious leader. That you worship God, that's all right. Yeah, Shukrachari said, you worship God, that's all right. But don't be fanatical about it. Life is to have a nice home, nice place to live. You're a king, so you should have a nice kingdom. So you live very happily in this material world, and you also worship God, that's all right. You pray to God, be a good man, ask God to bless you with more money. But now God had come. Bali Maharaj was in ecstasy. Because he was born in the family of the demons, he was king of the demons. But he wasn't interested in this money, friends, family, children, wife, home, all these things. As the king of the demons, he had conquered all over the universe. Um, but in his heart, his, his real desire was only, how can I see Krishna? And his guru realized, and he also realized, that here, Lord Vishnu has come in front of you, disguised as a Brahmana boy. So Bali Maharaj with much endeavor, after much planning, with great endeavor, had conquered over the universe. But here, Lord Vishnu has come, saying, Give it to me. And Bali Maharaj, immediately, without any hesitation, Yes, please take. He couldn't imagine anything more ecstatic, that now I won't have to worry about all administering this universe and dealing with all these demons. Let me give everything to Lord Vishnu. But his guru said, No. So Bali Maharaj said to his guru, no to you, sir. No to, Bali Maharaj said back to his guru, no to you, sir. I will give everything to Vishnu. So Shukracharya, then I'll curse you. Well, what are you going to curse? He doesn't have anything left anyway. But Bali Maharaj doesn't care. I can be cursed a million times by you, but if I get the chance to serve Lord Vishnu, I'm ready to do it. So like this, every Leela in Srimad Bhagavatam is full of the ecstatic dealings of the Lord with his devotees. Here in this first canto is described about Bhishma Dev, how he, his, the summit ecstasy of his Krishna consciousness was being attacked by Krishna. Krishna, he's not only worshipped by the flowers and by the kisses of the gopis, but also in the Viraras, vira the fighting, chivalrous mood. So Bhishma, he was a fighter, and not just any fighter, he was one of the most famous fighters in the world. Duryodhana felt confident of victory if, because Bhishma is on our side. Whoever side Bhishma is on must be successful. That was how they were. Even though he's already an old man, still he's so powerful and experienced and skillful that no one can stand before him. And even though Arjun is also a famous fighter and he has so many benedictions from different demigods and so many different weapons from different demigods, but still, before Bhishma, he's just like a fig. Fig is what you're giving me to eat. So uh, Bhishma, actually he didn't want to fight very strongly with the Pandavas. All his life he'd been at protecting the Pandavas from the misdeeds of the Kauravas, headed by Duryodhana. Now by the twisting of fate, he was fighting for Duryodhana against the Pandavas. It means fate is twists and turns, destiny. So he was fighting Arjuna and fighting with great anger. He loved Arjuna more than his own life. But the Kshatriyas are such harsh, the code of the Kshatriyas is so harsh and stern that even in fight, a son may fight against his father with full intent to kill. So he was fighting and Arjun was pulling out his weapons, but gradually, one by one, they were all being defeated. Arjun was gradually getting overpowered and he was losing control. There was no hope. Arjun must be, must be killed now. So Krishna, he is the chariot driver of Arjuna. He could not tolerate it anymore. So he immediately jumped from the chariot and picking up some broken chariot wheel, he came to attack Bhishma. And that was all Bhishma wanted to see. His whole life he'd been meditating on Krishna in his forearmed form as the fighter in the fighting mood. So when he had this vision of Krishna running towards him, he was completely satisfied. Krishna with the looking, the tremendous anger. When God is angry, you, there is no comparison. So Bhishma was happy to see Krishna in this form. 
He stood there, yes, let Krishna come and kill me. But actually Krishna, he was already defeated. Krishna, Krishna was defeated. Because Bhishma had taken the vow that either I will kill Arjuna or Krishna will have to break his promise. Krishna had promised I will not fight, I will not pick up any weapon in this battle. So Bhishma knew that I can defeat Arjuna. But he knew I will never be able to defeat Arjuna because Krishna will never allow it. So he said, either I will defeat Arjuna or Krishna will break his promise. He'll have to fight. Now, either I will defeat Arjuna, either, either I will kill Arjuna or Krishna will have to break his promise by fighting to defend him. So when the, when the fighting became so severe that Arjuna had no possibility to defend himself anymore, then Krishna came to attack Bhishma. Krishna became so angry that he's going to kill Arjuna, I cannot allow this. I will kill Bhishma. So Bhishma defeated Krishna by forcing him to break his promise. And Krishna became famous as Ratangapani, one who holds the wheel of the chariot in his hand. So all these pastimes in Srimad Bhagavatam, they are full of transcendental meaning and transcendental feeling also. Another, past, another pastime I was reading a little time ago was that of uh, Jambavan fighting with Krishna. So Krishna, he came into the cave finding Jambavan and he saw that the Samantaka jewel which people were killing each other over, he just thought, what is this? It's some toy. I'll let my child play with it. Because he was a devotee, he didn't care for this jewel which was producing mounds of gold every day. But when he saw that someone had come into his home and was disturbing his child and was trying to steal the jewel, he became very angry. He saw that the darkness of his cave had been lit up by this effulgent person who had entered within it. He appreciated the beauty of this transcendent, of this effulgent person. He thought he must be some demigod. So Jambavan also had his pride that I am a soldier of Lord Ramachandra. Because previously, many, many years before, he had fought in the army of Lord Ramachandra. So he was living on the earth a very long time. So he thought, he, this person may be a demigod, but he just can't walk into my home and mess around with me like this. So Jambavan also, he was proud of his superhuman strength. Although he was living incognito in the cave, he was actually more powerful than anyone in the world. So he physically assaulted this, uh, this effulgent, beautiful person who, was, who had come into his home and caused a disturbance. He, he physically assaulted this effulgent person who had come into his home and assaulted. caused... Assaulted means hit him, attacked him. And Krishna hit him back. And Jambavan hit him back. And this is where they started fighting. Krishna also enjoys fighting. It's also one kind of pleasure. So they were fighting and fighting. And Jamavan appreciated that this person, he's not only beautiful and effulgent, he's also powerful, he's strong. Uh, so Jamavan was also very satisfied, because he also liked to fight. Wow. Fighting, fighting men like to fight. So they were fighting on and on for 28 days and nights non-stop. And gradually Jamavan, all his body became exhausted. As he was going on, fighting and fighting, he was thinking, what's going on? I didn't imagine that anyone could fight with me like this. What kind of person is this who is fighting with me? Who is there in the world who can fight with me like this? And he thought through all the people in the world and he came to the conclusion that the only person who can fight with me on this level is Lord Ramachandra, my worshipful Lord. So he, was, he realized, I'm fighting and fighting. Who am I fighting with? This is that very person who I've been meditating on all these thousands and millions of years. That very person, the whole monkey army stood behind. That person who we fought for against the Rakshasas headed by Ravana. We saw him in the battlefield standing with his bow. All these years I've been living here in separation from him. Now he has come again to my home. It must be him. Who else could it be but him? But I was so foolish I could not even recognize him. He wanted to take something from me. I can give my whole life, I can conquer the whole world and give it to him. And all he wanted was some insignificant jewel that produces 40 mounds of gold a day. What a mistake I've made. So he fell down at the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra, who is here as Lord Krishna, and prayed to him for forgiveness. That my Lord, I could not recognize you. How kind you are to come and visit me. Please immediately take this jewel. Please also take my daughter, because I never... 
I never gave her in marriage because there was never anyone suitable enough to take her. But you are the only suitable person. So like this, all the leelas described in Srimad Bhagavatam, described in the scriptures, uh, not only reading them, but just trying to see what is the mood of the devotees in receiving the Lord. In commentaries on the Srimad Bhagavatam, our acharyas, they have expanded on the leelas which are told to show what are the uh, thoughts of the devotees. Similarly, the uh, Ramayana, that is there by Almiki, but there are other Puranas and other narrations which describe some of the leelas even in more detail. There is one uh, very nice story demonstrating Hanuman's affection for Lord Ramachandra. Of course, that is elaborately described in the Ramayana, but there is no limit to such description. So there is that incident when Vibhishan came from Lanka and entered the camp of Lord Ramachandra and the monkeys. So they were captured by the monkeys, Mr. Vibhishan and his one assistant, his minister, and brought before Lord Ramachandra. Just see, we have caught some spies. We should immediately kill them. Let us take all the information we can from them and then kill them. But Vibhishana explained that actually I am from the I am the brother of Ravana, but I don't support his activities at all. 